Hebrews 11, 4. By faith. And by the way, there's the two words you need. I want you to notice what it does not say. Here's where I'm going to debunk how Genesis 4 has been preached. It does not say, by blood, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice to God. For those that don't know what I mean, let me explain how the traditional church has preached Genesis chapter 4. This was the very Pentecostal roots of my Jesus preaching growing up, and that was this. God accepted Abel's offering because it was full of blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. I told you before, sometimes we're harming biblical interp because we're being anachronistic. We're putting things into the story that they could not have possibly known. Guess what? Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. does not show up in the Bible until Leviticus. Abel is un It's unfair to judge Abel by a scripture he doesn't know. In fact, a scripture that hasn't even been written yet. So Abel does not go into this sacrificial system saying, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, so I'm going to offer up a lamb. And it was always presented to me, Cain rebelled against God's system of sacrifice. He knew without the shedding of blood there was no remission, and he ignored it. And he put corn and, and beans and wheat on the altar as a way almost of snubbing God, saying, ah, take this, no blood. Abel's offering was not accepted because it bled. Abel's offering, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Not because Abel's sacrifice had blood, but because Abel's sacrifice had the one thing Cain's sacrifice did not have. Cain's sacrifice did not have faith. In fact, and I've never read or heard anybody else say this, don't take this as theology, take this as Pastor Paul's theory. I have a, a theory that God went the route of the shedding of blood because Abel's sacrifice was offered by faith and it shed blood. And God took the first faith sacrifice and went, now all sacrifices will have blood. Don't, don't go write a commentary on that. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't thought out all the implications yet. <laughs> I'm not prepared to defend it in a Q&A. Because that'll come up. I'll be on somewhere and somebody will, oh, I heard you say something one time on a message. How'd you like for you to give me five scriptures on that, please? <laughs> okay. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, though through which, rather, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. He had never, I love this. Abel had never had the recognition that he was righteous. He was vanity. He was waste. Bubby was it. Bubby was gotten. Bubs was the guy. Abel saw him every day and went, look at my big brother. His countenance has never fallen. What a guy. If I'm going to go to God, I'm going to have to go just believing in God because I can't go believing in me. Bub can go believing in him can't go believing in me so God I I'm going to give you the best stuff I got by giving you the best of my flock and the fats of my flock I'm not worried about where my flock's going to go next week ladies and gentlemen you were just introduced to living sacrifice he sacrificed the future of his flock though they were living because he believed God and in that moment it was witness to his spirit you are righteous In other words, you are acceptable. What did he do? Faith. He didn't really do anything. Faith. He just believed. It helped that he didn't have anything else to believe in. And we have had so much to believe in as Americans. I'm not cutting down being Americans, but we've had, we've had our wealth, and we've had our security, and we've had our property and we've had our education, and things that have been deprived to other places in the world. It's why when you go to Africa and you preach the gospel, the response is overwhelmingly different than it is in the United States. Oh, overwhelmingly different than it is. There's nothing else to lean back on. It's, it's a bunch of people that come in and say, well, I can believe that, because I don't have anything else to go believe in. There's I have nothing back there. Not just Africa, but other, other cultures of the world, too. And in the, in the U.S., very difficult. In fact, 
It's why the prosperity message took off so much in America, because it was the only thing that really spoke to a lot of Americans. Is it, oh, God, you make me rich? <laughs> now that's a God I can go to church and serve. And, and what Abel brought was the old vanity Abel with the best he had, and knowing that the best he had might mean if God takes all these, what am I going to do? I mean, I got, I just got a bunch of scragglies back there now, a bunch of scrawnies. And the moment he, I, this is amazing to me, the moment he offered it, it was witness to him, you are right. He never had that before. The light bulb, I've seen the light bulb go on in people all over the world when you get them to believe you are righteous. And the first thing they do is release tears. There's like this floodgate comes out of them that, that weeps. Some of, it's, some of it's shock, some of it's joy, some of it's pain, some of it's anger that they waited so long for somebody to tell them they were righteous. They want the years back. I've had, I can't tell you the elderly people in the church, two times my age, three times my age, who have come to me and said with tears, I'm angry that I was cheated for a half a century going to church and never knew that I was the righteousness of God in Christ. And I'm angry that I spent six decades, seven decades, living my life, crossing my fingers, hoping that I had done enough for God to make it home. And in one moment of teaching somebody about faith in who Christ is, you can witness to them that through that faith they are righteous. If you can get that one moment of revelation, it makes everything in the world worth it. And then to try to just, then we go to work pulling off grave clothes because they're just loaded with them. They're so loaded with them that some people can't live the rest of their lives then. It's just, you got to pull those grave clothes off, pull those grave clothes off and go be free. Go be free in Jesus. God testified of his gifts and through it, being dead still speaks. There's, a, there's the power end to that verse. Through what he did, he still speaks, which is God's way of saying through the author of Hebrews, copy Abel. You're not even a shepherd. You, how can you copy Abel? Well, he obviously didn't mean copy Abel in the natural. Copy Abel by giving of faith in whatever you do. Give of faith. By faith, Abel believed God and God counted to him for righteousness. 